I think so. <laughs> hey guys, this Impromptu. is Misty Buck. It is Marketing Monday. Yeah, sorry, we got a little delayed there in the beginning. I'm Misty Buck, president of Missy. This is Marketing Monday. We're so glad to have you guys with us as we are every other week. I have a super special guest today. So Tommy over here is normally behind the camera. If you don't know, he is the producer of this show and many of the other shows that happen here week after week. And he's also the CEO and founder of Tasty Scout. So Tommy, tell us a little bit about that. And by the way, today we're going to be talking about video marketing. Which is, is exactly what I'm all about. So <laughs> thanks for having me on. I'm, I mean, it's my pleasure to uh, hang out with you on this side of the camera. Totally different. Yes. But uh, so Tasty Scout, I, I developed an app. It's a tablet based app that allows you to leave a video review mm -hmm. of a restaurant right right there after you finish your dining experience. And it pushes it to their social media, to their website or wherever platforms you want it to be. So right. it started like I was getting ready to launch St. Patrick's Day and then COVID happened. Uh. So it's been and I invested a ton of money in it. And so it's just been sitting there because the restaurants aren't at 100 percent. Right. And they're not willing to spend the money because it's a subscription based plan that they sign up for and I provide the hardware and set up everything for them, do a training with the staff. Oh wow. And then they're then they're on their own. And they it can either be like a one that they bring to the table or it's a freestanding kiosk or it's mm -hmm. a wall mounted system. Uh whatever one they think is more it depends on the setting, like what's what's the layout of the restaurant and that kind of thing. Right. Which one works the best. So that's it. It's on hold until you know we get out of this COVID thing and we get yeah. get our shots and can go back full. We're getting closer. Full strength. I think we're getting closer. We're getting closer. So I think that that is super, super, super cool because video is so important. So I love the idea of encouraging people to leave video testimonials. Yeah, yeah. I think that that is huge. I think that's no matter what industry you're in, that's definitely something to consider. So let's talk about what we are seeing in video today. I know we're definitely seeing it. It's not going away. It's growing in popularity. So how can... A, I think business owners by now understand that it's an important concept in their marketing, right? A really important right. piece is the video. So if I'm a small business owner, what is what are some tools I can use to okay. get started with video? If so, I'm kind of like in a DIY space. Okay, right? so listen, people think, oh, I have to get this expensive camera. It's got to be a DSR right. and I got to have all this other stuff and lighting and all that. No, right from your phone. And that those spontaneous videos that you shoot live and you upload live are mm -hmm. really cool. They're engaging. I think they build like brand awareness and trust in whatever the thing that you're doing. Right. And it makes you more human. It's not like, you know, you're a robot or some weird thing. So it gives your company some some real, you know, life to it. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, you're you've got this amazing setup, which you guys can't see behind the camera. There's awesome setups that we have here. So if I'm a business owner and I don't have a ton of money, like you just said, to throw into a camera, what should I what can I go for? Should I just use my phone? Is there like an app? Like what's the best way to get started with that? So you, I mean, for live video, you can just do it right from your phone mm -hmm. and upload it directly to Instagram or Facebook or whatever platform you want to use. Um, but then there are a ton of apps. So if you want to make it a more produced feel to it, where you're doing some branding, some text over the images or mm -hmm. any kind of other kind of uh, graphics and things like that, then there's a ton of apps like Adobe Spark, Canva, okay. Uh, over there's a bunch of really cool ones then most of them are free um, to use so mm -hmm. I would recommend try try and find the one that you like the best that's easier easiest for you to use try a bunch of them and see which one you like the best yeah I like that because there really are a lot of different apps out there most of them are free a lot of them have paid upgrades but you can get by I think with a lot of these free apps there's even apps to create stories and right to, mm -hmm. to, to format your stories and the videos that you do there. By the way, if you're watching live, I want to thank you for being here. Go ahead and drop in the comments if you have any specific questions and we'll get them answered today. We're talking again all about video marketing. So um, and I again, happy hey, to Denise, have take off the bottom of the overlay there. Oh, see, this is yeah, now now it's okay right there on that shot. But when, <laughs> when, this is you could just take it off and then put it on at the end. Yeah. No, no, just click on that little on the on the right side there. There you go. <laughs> Boom. This is live, guys. You see, you see all the things that are happening live right here. And when we're talking about live video and we're talking about that realness, this is one that's one of the things that we're talking about, right? Is just giving people access to what's really going on. So commercials are great, highly produced edited video is awesome. And there's certainly, certainly, certainly a place for that. But when you are just trying people you know they're craving this connection and video and live video behind the scenes stuff is an awesome awesome way 
to do that. Yeah. And you know, you've seen the videos that Grant does and those are usually like 45 <laughs> seconds. They're insane. And he does crazy stuff and acts weird, Right. but they're engaging because not only that he's got a huge personality, but the things that he's talking about are cool. Mm -hmm. And he's right. He's in like when he's in a, in the restaurant, he's back there making sushi. Like he had a sushi outfit on like a chef. Oh, I missed that one. <laughs> yeah. It was insane. <laughs> but like getting in, getting behind the scenes, talking to the owners, talking to the, the, the people that work there, the employees, and then kind of getting a feel for what that place is all about. And in some of those, you can almost like smell how good that pizza is or whatever uh -huh. that thing is. And then using, you know, he uses the hashtag that's community. Right. Um, I'm not sure that hashtags anymore are as valuable as they used to be. Um, I think tagging is fr something that you want to definitely do, especially in those little 15 second to right. one minute videos. Um, and that's going to get more engagement, I think. So, right. I agree. And I think, I do think hashtags. So on a broader scale. So if it were, we used the example last week, if it was like a national holiday and there's a reason that you're and, and so that's a reason to include a hashtag. Um, if you're someone that's really active on Twitter, hashtags are awesome. If you're talking about a specific topic, although again, they're not even used as much there, but let's say for instance, you want to see what everyone's who's tagging the national championship college football game. For example, that's about Go to guys. <laughs> let's say you want to, Ooh, better be careful saying that in Miami. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> well, I mean, it's worse. The other guys, just the same devil. Uh, I mean, it's one of the, oh. the lesser of two evils. Oh my God. I would love to talk sports right now, but we're still talking. Yeah. Well, Anyways, we digress, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> always. We're always trying to get to the next topic. So, but anyways, um, but yeah, so if, like if you were trying to have a specific conversation around a specific topic or you were branding a hashtag, like that's community, those are really, really good ways to do that. So let's talk about live for a little bit because you right. are really proficient in this and yeah. people are wondering, all right, if I want to do a live stream, do I, number one, what are the channels that I can stream live on? So mm -hmm. let's start with that. Okay. So Facebook, obviously, right? Instagram, mm -hmm. YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, can you do the live on Twitter? Uh, yeah, I think you can because we pu we publish. You used to be able to through um, Periscope. Yep, but that but still exists because that's our distribution channel that, that we yet. use. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. So our videos do from here. This, in fact, this show will be live on Twitter. Okay. So that's another know. option. Yeah. No, but I don't know how easy it would be to do from your phone on multiple platforms. Right. I, I think you have to pick. Pick, kind of figure out like who is my audience where are they going and they're likely on instagram more than anything mm -hmm. and then f figure out how to make instagram work for you right yeah and i think that that's, that's an excellent point where is your where is your audience and how do you get the most um reach for that like where are you gonna have the most engagement with as we know organic reach is really hard to come by right these days right it's even harder to do that live video is one way around that um if you could do like let people know ahead of time. Oh, okay. We're going to go live about this topic, creating an event or whatever yeah. on Facebook. Oh, and this is a guest that I have. So now you're cross promoting that live right. stream. That's another way to do it. Um, so tell us, let's, uh, no, let me ask, I want to ask you a question. Oh. So let, let's, let's talk. Cause I know one of your clients is uh, Mitch Panther. Yes. Panther, Panther. And uh, an attorney and law firm. How would they do it? How, like, what would their stories be about? Would it be like client testimonials or would it be like, Mitch behind his desk talking to somebody or so we do with them. Um, it's a lot of in the, the videos that we do produce for them. A lot of them are in their office. Mm -hmm. So they do have if you've heard of them, I'm sure you've seen their commercials. They, they do have these awesome, beautifully produced um, videos and commercials and um, overview videos. So if you go to their website or their YouTube channel, you're going to see this amazing overview video that really tells the story of who they are as a firm and, and, and people and their culture and their mm -hmm. values. But um, just for like our everyday stuff, I mean, it's literally me with either um, a camera that I bought or my iPhone taking, asking them questions and then they answer them. And they're usually they're sitting behind their desk mm -hmm. or somewhere in their office and we're doing um, so the, the firm I think it overview, depends on your style though, right? The firm like, overview, is that like more than a minute or is that a minute? Their 60 firm seconds? overview is over a minute. Okay. So that's got to be on IGTV then. If we're posting it on Instagram. Right. Yes. yes. So where, do, so you would post that on what? Facebook, Instagram, Yeah. So Twitter. We have, it lives on their YouTube forever. And mm -hmm. then um, the challenging thing I think with some of these other channels is that it kind of, it can get lost in the shuffle. So um, but we'll reintroduce them. So if we have a video, it's still a timely topic. We haven't posted it in a while. We'll post it again, or we'll add it into a newsletter or we'll use it in a blog. Um, 
just I think thinking too about how to repurpose what you have if right. it's something that's like an evergreen topic. So like frequently asked questions are awesome. Um, we're seeing this move towards voice search on our phone. And mm -hmm. so people are saying, oh, what's so and so or hey, hey, Siri or Alexa. No, I'm not talking to you now. But let's say like a, like Alexa right. or whatever, you know, like what's the answer to blah, 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 blah. And you have an answer for that. Mm -hmm. It could very well um, come up. Right. So right. and Google will show video search results for YouTube in their search results for certain Absolutely. topics. Absolutely. So and it's Im so, super important to put something in the description. Yes. That is relevant to whatever that particular topic is. Yeah. Exactly. And then I was going to ask you what what do you think about playlists? Like I think of those as like highlights. Okay. On Instagram. Uh -huh. So I want to if I'm going to have like client testimonials is one playlist I would right. have. Right. Uh, frequently asked questions would be one. Right. About the firm would be one. Right. So those are all things. So what's your feeling about playlists and how can you leverage that to, to get more views and get more people to watch your content? Yeah, I think you I think you have to absolutely leverage them, particularly on YouTube. And because that's that's essentially what people are looking for. Right. And so let's say um, I'll go back to the Panther Panther and San Pedro because we do have so many amazing videos for them and we just are constantly building that library. But it'll it, we have like a a playlist for car accidents. We have a playlist for medical malpractice. We have a playlist for construction accidents. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on to all these subsets of their services where we answer questions particular to that topic. Mm -hmm. And then those videos are not long winded. They're usually about a minute, two minutes max, depending on the complexity of the topic. But um, yeah, that's that's essentially what we're what we're doing there is is creating and i think that's a really good way so when people are thinking of content whether it's video or blogging or social media or oh my god like how do i put together content right. i think questions like just listening to the questions when people call you hey blah 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 blah, whatever their question is write that question down that's a topic for you absolutely absolutely so how important is it to do some branding beginning and end of those videos some call to action like you want them to know where mm -hmm. they're located you want them to know the website so they can find them online and, right. and do some more investigating about that particular for, for example, Mitch's law firm. Mm -hmm. So how, what do you do with branding as far as where that needs to be and how important is it to be on a video? So we typically, I mean, there's lots of ways to go about this. I think more than anything, you want to focus on not necessarily a video as a sale, like a hard sell, but as connecting with people. We really want to continue to make sure that you are putting content out there, no matter where it is, or if it's video or whatever, that you're focusing on people. And then yes, you can say, hey, is this a problem that you have? Here's how we can help you contact us here. And I think you can put that on there. But if you're in giving people, if you're in the, if you're like, let's think about how you consume media, right? If you hop in upon a video and in the first 30 seconds, all they're talking about is who they are and what they do and how you can buy from them. You're not going to last 10 seconds, right? You're going right. to get out of there. So, but if you're like, okay, I have a question about how to make pizza dough. And like the video is, about, I was talking a lot about pizza on this show, don't I? Spaghetti last time. Spaghetti was last time. That because it was national spaghetti day. Oh, I love carbs. I can't yeah, help yeah. it. And I heard today, <laughs> I heard on the F Factor, the girl from the F Factor was here and said it's okay to eat carbs. So I feel much yeah. better about myself. There you go. Yeah, you gotta have some carbs, right? A little bit of energy. So, anyways, um, but let's say like that's what it is. Like, how do I make pizza dough? Or um, what's the first thing do I do after a car accident? I'm do I'm searching for those things because that's the answer that I want. So you give them the answer, and then you can say, Hey, you know, by the way, if you want more resources like this, or if this is a topic that you want to dig into deeper, or if you want to set up a free consultation, or whatever your call to action is, here's how you can contact us. The other thing that you can do um, is how you know we have those labels. Well, here mm -hmm. of our names and our right. company, we can, um, you can put that on the bottom of your video and say, Hey, like just have the website there the whole time. So if someone wants more information, they can go to your website, call the action page, your phone number, whatever it is. Right. right? And they can just grab it from there too. But I wouldn't be like super salesy upfront. Right, right, right. What do you think about using employees to kind of on their, on their particular personal social media to promote Whatever that, whether whether it be a restaurant or whether it be right. a, I mean, I think it's up to the individual, right? I, I work with some organizations where it, it's tough for us because we have they have very they work with very sensitive confidential information and the clients and the population that they're serving. So we have to be very careful about um, 
about what we put out there. And then a lot of people too, and understandably so, they're private and they don't want to share about work and they don't want to talk about that kind of stuff. And right, I think right. that that's, that's perfectly fine. But I think if you have employees that are interested in using social media, this is why you need a social media policy and procedures document that yeah, everybody knows what package. it is. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. and whether it's on your personal or on the company page, they know like these are the the parameters right and these are yes and these are no yes topics no topics right no politics usually yeah 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 i mean what because you don't want an employee even if it's on their personal account they're in your uniform standing in your place of business talking about their political views and now someone thinking is thinking that's representing your business right, right? which it completely so, might not be <laughs> and it completely might not be so again i think it depends on the nature that you can work with with somebody in social media, you can even Google social media policy and procedures and adapt one of your own. But um, if you're going to open that up, then make sure for sure. Because some of these kids, place. some of these millennials have tens of thousands of followers on Instagram right. and stuff. Right. So right. You, and I think, but I think that's thinking too, like, is that my audience? Right. Right. Maybe right? not. Maybe not. Right. Like maybe right. on the side, there's some kind of fashion model and your business is, I don't know. I mean, maybe you're a dry cleaner and that works. That's a perfect sync. You know, so there's perfect synchronicity there. Right. But if not, then, um, you know, just these are just things to to think about. Talk about insights, like some of the things that you can look into on, on Instagram. Like we're talking about audience and right. getting the right audience and finding the right people. Mm -hmm. How do you use insights, whether it be an Instagram or uh, Facebook or YouTube to get to figure out exactly how to start marketing that particular right project well i mean I think everyone can look at insights and we certainly do look at insights we're looking at again in your goals um are if, if our goals are more followers if our goals are more engagement if our goals are we want people to click and go to this specific landing page and then how many of those are converting and filling out a form or whatever it is that we want them to do but i think that those metrics ultimately are going to depend on um on what it is that your organization goals are and when you're looking at those analytics, this is why we want to talk about audience because well, you might have a large audience, but then you're like, man, I don't understand why I'm not, why X, Y, Z is not happening, but because I have all these people watching, maybe they're not your target audience quite yet. Maybe you haven't found your audience quite yet. And there's a couple challenges that are coming up around this, by the way. One is we're seeing more people instead of tagging people. So remember like, and this still happens. So like if you're having a contest or something in particular, it still happens. But I think a lot of people, and I'm seeing this a lot on Instagram, instead of tagging somebody in the comments, cause there's like a meme or something that you want them to see or a sale or whatever it is, we used to tag people in the comments and that still happens. But what's happening more and more is someone is sending that as a private direct message. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about this last week. That is a challenge for analytics because that's called dark social. That is a private space. We have no idea and we will not right. be able to know that Sally sent that to Sue exactly. in a direct message. So I think when you're, when you're thinking of these analytics, keep these types of things in mind because it doesn't mean that people aren't seeing your content and interacting with your content. Um, another example is, I'll give a perfect example. So I do this weekly show every week, right? We post it every week on the community newspapers page. It goes on my page. It goes on my company page. It goes everywhere. Right. And maybe I don't see that there's a ton of views and maybe I don't see that there's a ton of comments or a ton of, ton of likes, but then somebody will say to me who didn't like or comment on that post, somebody will say to me, Hey, I like what you said about this. I have a question about this. Right. And they'll reach out to me. And so I think those are important considerations. It's not always just the hard numbers. Right. Right on. Did we cover our, cover everything? <laughs> Is there anything missing? Like I this think, is just ran. This so, is just scribbling I did over here. So, so tell us a little bit. Let's talk for really quickly. So this is a question. Another question I have for you. This is something I am not good at when I do videos outside of here. Lighting. How the heck do you set up good lighting? You got to remember that you're gonna have a. <laughs> you're gonna have shadows. You're gonna have. A, so this happened this weekend. So we went. I did a show with David Winker. Um, it was an NFL preview, uh -huh. playoff preview show, and we shot it at Deli Lane inside the tavern side. Oh, nice. And so the sun was out big time. So we had to position the table where we weren't getting that, that ambient light from outside in right. there. But there's these phones, the, the cameras on them are so good mm -hmm. that you really don't have to do much with it. You know, I shot on Instagram, on IGTV on my phone, and then we had the regular camera set up down there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have any extra lighting. I brought it. But when I, when I turned on the ring, it was just too much. It was, oh, wow. It was too much. 
We'll so, so really take a look at that natural lighting. Yeah, and, yeah. and when you're looking at lighting, you want lighting, I'm assuming, in front of you because I'm looking at all these lights we have right here yeah, yeah. instead of behind you. So like, don't well, stand in front of a window right, <laughs> in exactly. your house and do a video. Exactly. Turn the camera You're going to have a shadow on your face. <laughs> you're going to have a shadow on your face. All right. All right. So that's some, that's some good stuff to know. What about camera angle? Is there like a trick to camera angles? Mm, I think, he, I mean, you want it to just be natural. Okay. You don't want it to feel like it's robotic or like a news broadcast. Right. So I think the more offset they are and the kind of weirder different things that you can do with like how, what, what's your, you know, the person that you're focusing on for that mm -hmm. shot, the weirder stuff that you can do with that, the more clunky it looks and uh -huh. feels. I think people like that more. Okay. It's more natural. You know what I mean? Um, when it's a more professional setting, like we're doing something for Mitchell, right. you know, then, then it's gotta be on point. Right. Like it, you know what I mean? You can't do crazy uh, Grant style stuff, <laughs> you know, Grant style. right. He well, almost he did. You got to watch. That. Did you see the one where he like almost fell out of the kayak into the, into no, the room? Uh, no, I, okay. Apparently watch I that one. To it's watch a, that because that and the sushi one are my favorite. And the sushi one. Yeah, yeah. I miss both of those. Man, I have to go check yeah, them out. Yeah. That is hilarious. But here's All the right. thing. Like, you just got to go and do it. You yeah, just, I, I would agree with There's you no on fear. You got to just say, you. I'm not going to be afraid of being in front of the camera. Right. Oh, I don't look perfect. My hair's weird or my face is funny. Right. You know, not everybody is, you know, Brooke Shields. I mean, that's a way, that's way back. I just brought that up. <laughs> She's like 60 years old. Ariana Grande. Who's popular now? Kylie Jenner. I don't know. Beyonce. Me, yeah. Whoever you want to bring up. But right. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And I think that people get so, oh my gosh, people are so nervous about being on camera. And I know and I'm telling my clients all the time, we got to do video. People love video. When people see your face, even if you think it's the worst picture ever, those are always the most highly, if, photo or video, the most highly engaged pieces of content that yeah. I put out on their social media. It doesn't matter the industry, the month. It doesn't matter. Like for years, this is the way that it's been. And I have clients that they're so shy. And they're like, who wants to see my face? And listen, I'm in marketing because I'm supposed to be behind the scenes, right? right. Like that that's how I that's how I grew up. But when I started my my business, I had to learn to come forward and I had to learn to speak. And I was not good at public speaking. Oh my God, I was horrible in my college class. And this kind of stuff used to make me super, super nervous. And I've right. noticed that the more I do it and the less I Care, uh, care about making a mistake, right? the more natural it becomes. So I feel like that's totally true. You just got to do it. And it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't it's cost free. anything. free. And then yeah. when they're ready to go to the next level, then they call you and say, hey, I want to have these highly produced, really cool videos with graphics and branding and all right. that stuff. And then, and then I they, refer them to you. <laughs> that, that, yeah. Wh however, however, right? we can work together on it for sure. But yeah. No, but that's totally the thing. I think you just got to get started and you just got to do it. So really quickly, what is one mistake that you see people make all the time with their videos like that you're seeing businesses maybe you're scrolling through and you're like man like i wish i could tell them blank over branding over branding i think so yeah where it's just so too much about... so where there's just a lot of noise uh -huh. and there, it's hard to focus on the, whatever the video is or whatever the content whatever the message the uh -huh. message is lost because it's just too busy there's too much you know going on in the in the shot yeah so like if you have like for instance a cup and a like this and a that, hat, and, and a shirt, a, hat, a stack of books, a <laughs> right. flag, the stand up banner. Like no, no, people, don't do they, it. They, yeah, <laughs> we're not gonna like word, we don't want the word vomit from Mean Girls. We're not gonna put <laughs> brand vomit like into right. our videos because right. I think you're right. It is overkill. Overkill. It is overkill. Less is better when it comes to that. I yeah. think. Yeah. And I think too, always remember. Just watermark it. That's all you need. Just to put a yeah. watermark. It's subtle. It can be out of the way. And, but it's still, yeah. it's still something that people are gonna see and connect with whatever your brand is. Right, there's definitely that balance because you want people to connect with you. And if you're, it's too distracted, they're not gonna be able to really listen to what you're saying. So you want them to connect with you because remember people do business with people that they like, period, blank, that's just how it goes. And, but if you don't tell them how to buy from you, they don't, they're not, they don't know. That's right. So they can't buy from you. Number one, they can't, listen, if you're taking anything away today, take this. They can't buy from you if you don't know you exist. So get your videos out there. And number two, they can't take an action if you don't tell them what action to take. So. Right, right. So. And that's the one thing we didn't talk about, I think it's kind of, it's pretty important is audio. Like how is, yeah, the, how right. is the microphone on your phone? And you can get one of those little add-on mics, mm -hmm. like a road mic that plugs into your iPhone through the lightning port, whatever that, I don't, I'm a Samsung guy, so uh, whatever okay. that is, okay. USB-C or what, whatever that thing is, and you get much better sound, and it's 
those kind of little uh it'll pinpoint Ooh, the audio tip. i'm gonna i'm yeah. gonna get one of those actually you I should have one on my my camera like that but i don't have one for my phone yeah yeah and half the time i end up doing videos on my phone because it just is where i'm at and what i'm doing and that's what i have is my phone and there's some really cool tripods whether they're the little joby ones or the right. ones that are more that have the you, that way you stabilize the shot and it's not handheld right. doesn't right. have that but there's sometimes that you want to have the handheld feel to it right you know it just really depends on what, what the content's what about for. what's the message i'm trying to get out there right i think yeah if you're doing um a somewhat like a behind the scenes of something going on and it's like you're having an event Remember we used to do events. Right. Uh, if you're having an event or you're having a sale um, or let's say you're just trying to sell, I, again, we've used this example before, but selling products on Instagram Live. So going live and showing people your products and allowing them to DM you to purchase. I don't think those have to be perfectly edited still no. videos. But if you're creating a video that you're going to read, and then post later yeah a tripod so my tripod even has one of those ring lights that you were just mm -hmm. talking about connected to it already and so that helps with my lighting problem although it's still not perfect but <laughs> that's all right <laughs> i Keep love trying. coming here because it's like well i know the lighting's gonna be good <laughs> absolutely so i don't know all right so i don't see any comments or anything coming in here but if you guys do have any questions go ahead and reach out to us um again this is tommy he is the founder of tasty scout we're gonna get tasty scout in here once restaurants are up soon, and running again soon hopefully by the summer yeah and that's again that's video testimonials for your restaurant business yep right so yeah hopefully in the summer we'll be good to go with that fingers crossed um, in the meantime you have any other questions about how to use um video or marketing or messaging just feel free to reach out to either one of us tommy's here all the time at the studio um i'm here every monday let us know in the comments we will definitely check it out and and be happy to help you guys out there you go so, all right that's it. All right. So I'm going to close out for today. I want to thank you for being here for another marketing Monday. I know we're just starting no, no, the week. Yeah, we're, Second I'm full week. Making well, sure she doesn't shut it off. <laughs> he's producing and producing uh, all at the same time. So anyway, so I want to make sure this is the second full week of January. Make sure you get out there. If things didn't start out quite the way you wanted to pivot, you can always pivot. You don't have to wait for every Monday. You don't have to wait for a new day. You can do it right now in this moment. Go ahead and do it. Take tiny steps. Keep those goals. And I will see you guys next week. Thanks for being here. And thank you to Tommy. Hey, thanks wanna... for having me. <laughs> we'll I enjoyed see you it. Next week, guys. Now you can hit, there you go. And then hit okay. <laughs>